Uh, in my opinion, the, the synchronicity concept has become very little more than a buzzword in modern times. Um, most people use it in a way that probably would have made Jung himself cringe. Um, furthermore, the concept of chance uh, has never been well defined, chance or randomness. I will concentrate more on the work of Paul Kammerer uh, and his concept of seriality because it is something that is relatively unfamiliar to people. And um, although I believe that that concept in itself has great merit, I think it can also help reopen uh, a more intelligent consideration of synchronicity and possibly lead to some um, intelligent uh, discussion about the concept of chance or randomness. I'm going to begin with a remark made by uh, Arthur Kessler in his book, uh, Case of the Midwife Toad, when he is talking about Kammerer's work. The book written by Kammerer called The Law of Seriality can be likened to an impressionistic painting uh, it is very beautiful, and it, it has a great aesthetic appeal, but when you walk up closer to it and stick your nose right in front of it, it turns, it turns into little blobs of paint that don't mean anything. But I caution you against using any of his interpretations of the word of, of Kammerer. Um, he is totally unreliable in this area. Despite the fact that he read German probably better than I do, um, he made appalling blunders and completely misrepresented the man. So, I would like to characterize Kammerer and, and particularly this book, um, and Kammerer's attitude in this book as, as one in which you find a great tension between a sort of visionary approach and a scientific approach. Kammerer constantly calls himself a scientist. He doesn't want to be considered a mystic, even though he's dealing with uh, coincidental events, many of which would ordinarily be, be studied by people with a more mystical bent, or certainly an, uh, an anti-scientific bent. Yet, Kammer insists that he is a scientist. He was trained as a biologist. However, the book is full of a sort of visionary uh, account when you find these little, para uh, little paragraphs stuck between all of the scientific exposition. Uh, you know that there is something to what he is trying to say. Um, yet the book doesn't have uh, these position. This position is not elucidated clearly, even from a scientific point of view. So you find this tension in, in the writing, and it actually makes it quite interesting from a certain point of view, um, because to some extent, I think that the importance of Kammerer as a man or as a figure in the history of science, if he is ever appreciated uh, as he should be, is that he is someone who has actually begun to back out or back away from the current scientific paradigms. If I were to try to characterize Kammer more fully, I would say that he was more like a pre-Socratic philosopher. These ancient guys who went around and looked at the world about them and made statements about it, such as, oh, like attract, attracts like, and things seem to imitate each other, and so forth. These things that we regard as primitive science. Now, even though Kammer claims to be making a scientific account of coincidence, it never comes to the level in which it could be exactly reconceptualized or reformulated in terms of mathematics or physics. Paul Kammer was a man who sat around and observed coincidences. Most of these were positively banal examples of coincidence. The point is that he thought all of these were interesting, whether they were meaningful or not to the person. And I'm emphasizing meaningful for those of you who have read Jung's work on synchronicity because this becomes his criterion for a synchronistic event. We'll return to that in a moment. But what Kammerer did after observing all of these coincidental events in the world and daily life around him came to the conclusion that coincidental events, what we call coincidental events, were more prevalent in, in, in the world, in nature, and in daily life than could ever be accounted for by probabilistic considerations alone. Now think about that. How could you ever prove that claim? I know of no statistician, however brilliant a mathematician he may be, who could ever formulate a statistic model, model such a thing statistically. In other words, what we are up against is a case of first principles again. Kammerer 
through his study of coincidence, finds coincidence not just an interesting curiosity, but a way of seeing into the world, and particularly into daily life, in a new way. It is attractive to him, not just because of its novelty, but because it gives him a glimmer of something that's missing in the science that exists at that time. Well, let's take the, science, the scientist's point of view. He would say, a lot of events that happen that we cannot easily explain, we call these chance events because we don't think that, they, that the events have a common cause. In other words, chance events are defined as what, are, what cannot be given scientific explanation. But you see, that's the same level of commitment. It's, it is a prejudice, it is a presupposition, it is not demonstrable. The value of Kammerer's approach here, and I emphasize it once again, you are still all dominated by scientific thinking. You may try to escape it, but you're all dominated by it at a very, very subtle, le subtle level. The value of the seriality concept is that it can provide a little path out of that constriction, out of that habit. Because above all, what he is encouraging people to do is see things in a new way. Not, you can't prove it. This is not the level of proof. This is the, this is the level in which you first gain a conceptualization of nature. This is pre-conceptual in, in, in the scientific sense of the word. Synchronicity is defined by Jung as an acausal psychophysical parallelism, which is characterized by the meaningfulness that this event, that the external or physical event has to the individual who experiences it. Here is a modern definition of chance, a, a chance event coming from the late 19th century. A chance event is one in which the component elements that are coinciding are due to an uh, irreducible plurality of causes. Okay, we have to put it succinctly. What that means is the individual causes, in a car accident for example, the individual causes that are bringing the two cars together are not correlated. There's no common cause. Therefore, they are chance-like. This is the, a modern scientific definition of chance. Now, I will give you Kammerer's definition of a series, which I will actually read instead of just paraphrase. A series, which is a multiplication of cases, is represented as a lawful repetition of the same or similar things and events. A repetition that is a clustering in time or space. Time or space, by the way. Now, the name of Kammerer's book is a teaching or a theory on the repetitions that occur in life and the affairs of the world. If you read Jung's book on synchronicity, you will find him in a bit of a quandary. So what Jung has to do here is a dodge that would be worthy of a modern physicist. Jung says that synchronistic events really originate outside of space and time. They represent the intrusion of a kind of order that is outside of ordinary spatiality and temporality that intrudes itself into our space-time framework. Now, if you are satisfied with that line of reasoning, that's fine, okay? But to me, that is a dodge. Camera, on the other hand, regards repetitions through time as being the real clue to coincidental events. So what Camera does is makes a series of hypotheses. In other words, what in fact would allow for a multitude or superabundance of coincidences? He is beginning from the point of view that coincidences are superabundant. So what are some of the things that will bring us to that point? Camera has basically three laws. One he calls the persistence law, the, other he call, the second he calls the imitation law, and the third he calls the attraction law. The persistence law for Camera, it could be regarded as a generalization of Newton's law of inertia. But Camera wants to state this law at the level of the mesocosm, and he wants to bring it together to explain why there are so many coincidences. He makes the very simple and beautiful thought, from a certain point of view, that there would be more repetitions if, in fact, events tended to repeat themselves. Now, this is not just a, a tautology. In other words, we, if the system, the mesocosm, had such a nature as to bring it about that the events that it caused tend to repeat inertially, we would have the beginning of a way to talk about coincidence.